Good evening. <laughs> Welcome to Northampton School Board meeting for Thursday, uh, April 18th, 2019. Um, welcome. I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, one quick item before we get to our first uh, presentation. That's approval of the minutes for March 21st. Do we have a motion for those? I motion to approve the minutes from March 31st. 21st. 21st. Public 21st. Oh, yeah. We have public and non-public. Um, corrections, uh, I gave, um, actually, Maureen, a couple of minor edits um, on the votes that were actually 401 on the previous minutes and a couple of date corrections. Um, does anyone else have any other edits, corrections, Hi. changes, comment? Yes. Um, if you go to the assistant superintendent's report, I'm sorry, what, what page is that, Ron? Uh, page four. Page four, thank mm -hmm. you. No. First paragraph, last sentence, the new plan will be introduced during the joint board in April and then submitted to the New Hampshire DOE as part of the approval process. And then the third paragraph, um, the superin Southeastern Superintendent's meeting versus the conference. And then Carl Ladd is executive director of the New Hampshire School Administrators Association oh, and conference to meeting. And I will give these to her okay, in, great. in writing. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Uh, all those in favor is uh, amended? No. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, we had one item on our agenda we're going to move up, which is um, we have a presentation tonight from the Good Deeds Club. So welcome. Come on in, there's plenty of room. Come on in. You guys can come all the way over here. Come on. There you go. What grade is this, or is there multiple grades? Um, all right. Last year, we from third grade, and then third graders moved up, and they just and they didn't want to just be done with it. So new third graders have added. Ready? Good evening. Good e <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, lost my voice. Good evening, school board members and administration. Thank you for inviting us to your meeting. Here are some of the members from third and fourth grade Good D Club. We have been meeting before school on Friday mornings for much of the school year and are glad for the chance to share some of our projects and ideas. The first project we did was called Let's Help Our Community. Because we had, because we had so many ideas, we broke up into smaller groups. Through these groups and their projects, the Good Deed Club is trying to make a difference in our community. To help our, the th threatened and endangered animals and are trying to make our school greener. The first project we did was called Let's Help Our Community. Here is a movie we have put together to show what we accomplished with the, this project and to let you know what this group will be working on in the future.
Another group is working to create a movie to share information about endangered and threatened animals in our world. Taking care of our world's animals is important to us. We hope that our movie will play in the school lobby and help teach students what they can do to make a difference for the animals they care about. We'll be holding a raffle to raise money to help these animals in May. The third project is the one you heard about in, at your February meeting. It is the Courtyard Project. We chose to focus on the courtyard because it is the place that all the kids see and can help share the idea that every step toward a greener world matters. Several groups and partners have worked to create movies to share what we hope to do for this project. Here is one of them. It shares what we've done so far and what we hope to accomplish when we're through. <laughs> nice work. Oh. Very exciting. We hope to share all of our movies and keynote and presentations on the Lobby TV soon. We hope everyone tries to do something to make our world a greener, happier place. Thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, we'll try to answer them. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, what are some of your ideas for fundraising money? Um, we're doing a raffle in May. A raffle, okay. And we've also written some books and we're going to work to learn how to yeah, do that and get money that way also. That's cool. So I don't have a question, but I've got a comment. I'm really impressed with the presentation but more importantly with the work that you all did great work and it makes me feel really um, optimistic about our future knowing that you guys are doing good deeds and making the world a little greener thank you and I just want to say thank you for coming tonight because we don't always get to see the stuff that goes on in the school we hear little bits and pieces about it, but it's nice to have you all show up and tell us about it yourself. So thank you for coming. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. you can stay if you want. Happy Easter. Yeah, please. <laughs> Great job. You did a nice job. You're going to miss it. Good work, guys. Brian. Yeah, I'll be able to find somebody with a back code that'll do it for free. <laughs> yeah. I, I printed your email. Look how big the font came up. Is that I was like, oh my gosh, I can read this. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even need your glass. I, I Fourth it and three. Fourth and third. The, 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 the combination of Linda Donahoe's, well, fourth grade, the Linda Donahoe students and Brenda Eves' third grade students. Not LaCroix? Yeah. Just Donahoe and Eves?
Okay. Well, they're, so if we can connect to them, I they're the two advisors, but I'm, I'm sure there's a mix. Okay. So we can yeah. definitely narrow yeah. yeah. just see. So we just got to, I mean, so so we'll And now for the rest of the show. We will resume. We went to last year with third graders. They moved out. They continue to want to do it. So we'll continue. All right. The whole energy level just displayed. Those of you who are still here. Sean. <laughs> uh, our next item on the agenda is our correspondence and commendations. Do we have? Um, no. I'll, I'll begin. Okay. Sure. Thank you. I have. I have a few. Uh, first of all, I'd like to commend and thank uh, Paula Field and Amy Choate. Primarily, there were several other volunteers, but they were the primary organizers of Healthy You Day on Wednesday, yesterday, <laughs> which, uh, which was throughout the morning in the cafeteria. And it, was, it was fantastic. A number of different presentations, including karate, and the students had a wonderful time. And Mr. Wonderful Carlson time. baked fresh bread for Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, as, as part of the local lunch. Yeah, local lunch. Uh, Excellent. Also, We Talks and Genius Hour were uh, last week. I want to thank and commend the seven eighth grade team, which is uh, Lauren DeConstant, Dana Hanson Babiak, uh, Eric Whitney, and Rebecca Jones for their, for their hard work on that project. <clears throat> And uh, it's been a while, but I, I do want to thank the, the emergency services, you know, North, um, Northampton Emergency Services, the police and fire department for putting on the basketball game, which uh, we missed since we were, we were here, but, but uh, it, was, it was packed and a huge success. And, and for the, you know, putting on this community event, it brings everyone out and everyone has a good time. So thank you to them. Uh, a couple of uh, other things. Uh, last night was the grades one through four talent show. Dan Sanger and Mary Oliver were the primary staff uh, faculty organizers for that. So thank you to them for their hard work. Um, there's really no one to commend for Beauty and the Beast. It was just astounding. So, you know, the students and staff, thank you. I just had a, I had a great time. <clears throat> and... Uh, I think a reminder, but uh, last month it was mentioned that Marcia Zavez was one of 39 uh, Teacher of the Year uh, nominees. So she's made it to the semi-finalist round on uh, Monday, May 6th. The Teacher of the Year Committee will be here. So they'll, they will observe Marcia in action. They'll interview Marcia. They'll interview us, central office. Um, I'll be reaching out to parents, um, a board member. Okay, Aaron. So a board member. So that is that, <coughs> and um, yeah, and we'll go from there. So we'll 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 uh, we'll put on a great show for them. Great. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Um, this sort of overlaps with question and comments. But John, did you want to say something now? Cue it up. Go and press the space bar. It's entertainment night here at uh, the school board <laughs> meeting. In our next video, uh, which was very well put together, the kids do, do a great job. And uh, I want to add now that uh, we weren't able to make it to, until the. Um, whoops. Okay. Oh, thanks. I can do that much. They run everything. <laughs> um, we were we got over to the uh, school play on the Saturday evening performance. Um, I tell you, well, it, we we only had time to set up a one camera shoot, but it was worth that one camera. Mm -hmm. Spectacular work. I had never. I. What do I know about Disney? Okay. <laughs> I had never seen or heard of. You know, I knew about Beauty and the Beast, whatever, but. You know, I would have paid 50 bucks a head mm -hmm. to see that play, the work, the determination, the teamwork, the camaraderie, the whole excitement. And if anything builds teamwork, I was very, very impressed. And, of course, we were just talking about the uh, quite possibility of Masha and, and of course, others too. But uh, being uh, teacher of the year, I said, boy, that's, that's something else. 
uh, we are running it now on town uh, on the station, the town station. We were still a little unsure about how YouTube was going to treat us if we published it there and then shut us down for a year and then we're out of business. <laughs> so uh, we're trying to, to borrow a word, finagle a way of getting this into our town hall stream system. And then once it's there, it's there for 10 years if you, <laughs> you know, want to watch it. So with that, um, trying to make more and more connections. As you know, I'm, I'm endlessly yapping about it and students and involvement and going on in high school. Uh, I thought I'd show this little three-minute video because we were invited to Pease uh, by the Air Force, Air National Guard, to uh, record their final farewell to the oldest plane in the U.S. Air Force, which was stationed at Pease, 62 years old, and was on its way to Arizona, not to be retired, but to keep rolling. So until they get a new one, it's going to be a quiet base. Anyway, uh, we ran a couple of interviews. We did the ceremony, generals running around everywhere. But we made sure at the end of the video we caught up with Matt Pongrace mm -hmm. and Alex Betcher, both of whom are NHS, NHS students. And for me, it was kind of cool because I've got former NHS students, WHS students, and we're working on a program about some guys who have already gone on it and are flying high. So I, this is where I hit the space bar. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> the anthem singer at the charity basketball game. Yeah. Oh. Phenomenal. <laughs> Phenomenal. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> So growing up on the seacoast here in New Hampshire, you know, obviously in Northampton and watching the airplanes fly over all the time, and I thought it was amazing. You know, I'd look up and be like, wow, that's really cool. I, you know, I can remember back in school doing school projects on, uh, on the aircraft and learn all about it. And someday I said, you know, I, I want to be on that airplane. I want to I wanna get up there, I want to fly around and see what it's like. And, you know, to be a part of it finally is amazing. You know, growing up, obviously, as some people know, that. Uh, learning to fly at Hampton Airfield and you know carrying on that passion for aviation here with uh, the KC-135 has, has been amazing. Yeah, so I actually grew up an Air Force brat. Uh, my dad was a fighter pilot, my grandfather was a bomber pilot, and uh, my father originally from Rye. We moved to Northampton uh, when I was a freshman in high school, and, and uh, my mother still a kindergarten teacher over there. And uh, you know, growing up under seeing the tankers, and my father told me about his experience from being a fighter pilot and the best thing you could ever see. And uh, you know, the horizon going across the ocean was that tanker turned in front of you and you know you were getting home. So uh, he told me about the coolest job that an enlisted guy can have in the Air Force and uh, that's that's uh, when I decided to go for it. And uh, no regrets, absolutely. So the KC-135, um, being a part of that community, um, starting off my career, is um, something that's pretty important, uh, pretty, uh, pretty amazing to be a part of and uh, really an honor to step foot in such a legacy aircraft that's had so much history, traveled all over the world. Uh, so many men and women have, have flown on the aircraft, and it's just, it's amazing to be a part of that. Um, and really, I only had a little over a year in the aircraft, uh, but it was enough time to, to get a good feeling for the aircraft and the amazing uh, aircraft that it is. Yeah, so it's a, it's a bittersweet kind of day out here. Um, I've been with the, with the unit for 10 years, and um, been a lot, a lot of different places, a lot of cool places, a lot of not so cool places in this aircraft, and it's uh, definitely a legacy aircraft, and definitely happy to have the honor to, to be on it for 10 years, everywhere from Iraq, Afghanistan to Kyrgyzstan to nicer places like Hawaii. So it's, uh, it's, it's definitely, definitely been an honor to fly in the aircraft, and very excited for the future. Um, 
staying with tankers and, uh, and continuing to, to do the mission of uh, air refueling. So the other two faces uh, responsible for this are in that room. Yeah, good job. Come guys. Come on out, guys. <laughs> As you know, we don't like to brag, but we do. Yeah. Thank you, John. Thank you very Thank much, you John. Standing. That was terrific. Great work. So if that's not there, yeah. All right. All right. Moving on. Uh, questions or comments from those in attendance? John? So far, that's the best meeting we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's the kind of comment we like. All right. Uh, <laughs> education <laughs> update, uh, school council. Okay, I'll uh, try to give you the abridged version. We met uh, a week ago yesterday. Uh, the student government has decided upon its class gift, so the class of 2019 will be giving. A mascot uniform. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that, that's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. So we're going to have a Jaguar. Yep. Mm-hmm. Cool. Games. Awesome. For games and things, and all, yeah, oh, I can't awesome. wait to see how often that Jaguar comes out. I can't wait to see who's <laughs> in the Jaguar. <laughs> so the, <laughs> the, council, the council retreat will be held on Thursday, June 6th. We're hoping to procure the, uh, you know, the town hall, so, but uh, that's to be determined. All right, so Thursday, June 6th. Uh, the, uh, we had an update on the RTI, uh, Response to Intervention uh, Committee, which Tracy and, and Becca will be heading up over the course of the next years, but, but certainly through next year we're uh, you know, exploring and discovering. Starting on uh, May, May 9th was a vi with a visit to uh, the school over in Nottingham. Becca, do you have any more details no. of, about that at this point? No. Nope. Okay. So a group will be going yeah. over there to see what they do and how they do it and, and how they do it so well. An acknowledged uh, regional leader in that regard. Uh, let's see, the uh, C Climate, Culture, and Communication Committee met uh, the other week on May 1st at our staff meeting on May 1st. Brenda Eves and Catherine LaCroix, both of whom were, were just here. May 1st, coming up on May 1st. Coming up on May 1st, um, we'll be sharing out with the entire faculty our, some feedback, takeaways that we've synthesized uh, through our process with Dr. Maura Hart, uh, analyzing uh, T-charts. Can't, um, can't really give you a, any examples at this point, but uh, they'll present to the faculty, we'll present to the school board after that, and then our actionable next steps. And we have a, a few. Right. So there's that. Anything else for the good of the Leadership Council order? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. Um, any questions for? Yeah, just from a process yeah. standpoint. So I want to make sure I'm not making any assumptions. So after Dr. Hart left, it sounds like, but correct me, that there was some work from the culture, communications, and? Yeah. Culture, climate, and communications. Climate yeah. Committee, small group work. That work's been completed, and that will then be reported out on the first, is that right? I, w I wouldn't characterize it as completed, but it, you know, progress has been made since Dr. Hart was last with us, and it's the Climate, Culture, Communication Task Force, I yeah. think I said committee, yeah. it's, it's the job to keep up the mantle and the momentum of that of the work. We'll, gotcha. can, we'll so. be continuing our work for some time, the committee, but the task force. Gotcha. So at the meeting on the first, is there a, is there a, a planned or desired kind of goal or outcome or is it is it is, is it com to communicate what dr. Hart reported on because I think she already communicated she, that right? that's so that's what's the, done what's the purpose of the so it was actually a, um, an opportunity for us to take um, at the end of our time with dr. Hart we had gone through an activity as a faculty all together and um, so it, and it was kind of a wrap-up activity that was done individually, yeah. so the, in small groups rather. So the CCNC then pulled all that together, synthesized it into one, um, one document that um, kind of pulled together all the different pieces. So we're going to share that out 
as a way to help inform what our next steps should be. So it kind of gives that opportunity for the faculty to see that information that we created ourselves, synthesized, and it's really in response to Dr. Hart's final presentation. Got it, okay. So there will be dialogue and feedback around the pro proposed yep. next steps at the meeting. Got it. So the, the reason I'm asking is because there is, to your point, a lot of information. Yeah. In reviewing the packet this evening and seeing the, the beginning review and then the review as Dr. Hart was exiting and see some of the some of the areas we gained, some of the areas that we maybe slipped a little bit, mm -hmm. it's really important to keep things going. And I know we have a narrow window between now and the end of the school year and then the summer's off and we could slip back and I'm hoping that we keep the momentum. Mm -hmm. That is um, our plan. Yeah. And the work. Okay, great. That's why I was looking for specifics around the the what, not not the when. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Tim. Okay. All right, moving on. Continuing business uh, board goals. Um, I just spoke actually about number one, our climate and culture. Um, I don't know if anyone has anything to add on other two goals. At this point, we'll be reviewing these and coming up with next year goals at our retreat, which we will talk about setting a date for no. <laughs> uh, we can do that now in conjunction with this I don't know does anyone have any thoughts or questions around existing goals or we can talk about our board retreat which again uh, mentioned last time we we had um, decided last year to do it after the council retreat I believe and then the SIP plan was complete so that we could align our goals with that yep. it, when it is a SIP plan is that part of the council retreat yes. okay so we would want to set something for after uh, June 6 so I don't know when our last day of school getting to our last day of school shortly today but um, we'd want to set it for some time after that I know we're getting into summer and potentially vacation so um, does anyone have any thoughts? Stand by. Tuesday, yeah. June 11th. Tuesday, June 11th. Anybody wants you just throw a date out? <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, yeah, I, I mean, for me, getting later into June could interfere with travel. So yes. I'd like to go sooner than, than later after the after the council retreat is done I mean would the SIP plan come out of that sort of yeah, functionally it complete it'll, it'll or be a draft we then bring it draft. to to the faculty but I think it's at least a jumping off point for yeah. you to see mm -hmm. where the priorities are. okay that's fine and, and frankly that's how we've done it but we've we've yeah, sort of worked out our con conceptual goals and then we've come back and approved them at a later meeting yeah. so that would I think that would work for us talking about um, this morning again? Uh, that would be me. the plan Generally, we'd usually try to do a half day starting at like 8 o'clock mm -hmm. till noon or something like that. So, Wednesday, June 11th. What? I'll, I'll, I'll wait for Scott. Oh, no. He said it would work. Yeah. So, uh, uh, quick question. So, Dr. Lupini, um, so that we're aligned with the SAU as well, um, will that give you the SAU time to inform our work as well? Um, I'll make sure that it does. Okay. Thank you. And then the second thing is because um, Greg's not here, um, I'm fine with the 11th, but I think we should throw out another date just in case. Ah, uh, good. The 18th is fine with me too. I, I mean, I can make other days work, but I just, when Greg travels, he usually travels a chunk of the week. Uh, yeah. Um, all right, well, let's set the target at, at June 11th. I'll check with Greg. Um, and um, uh, we'll set, is the 18th fine as an alternate for now? It's fine with me. And, yes. Okay. Uh, no. That's after school, right, has ended? Yeah, the 18th. Um, oh, yeah, that's after yeah, school gets I'm, out. Yep. No or yes? I'm pretty, no. No. I, I would prefer it would be before. <laughs> before school gets out. <laughs> okay. But, I mean, I can make that. I'm, All right. No. Well, but the problem with yeah. that is what? As you, what you said about, I mean, to go in the yeah. same week might yeah. right. he travels just as bad with Greg's schedule, exactly right? right. Yeah. I tell you what, let me, I'll, the 11th is the, I'll check with Greg by tomorrow, and if there's an issue with that, I'll communicate you say 8 to that, and we can work out a, we can work out a date. Yeah, 8 a.m., we'll pencil in, and, okay. but I'll confirm that with Greg, and then 
if that turns out to be a problem, we can yep. work out an, an alternate. Great. Is that fair? Um, uh, no. Um, you went to town we hall do, last year. Town hall in the past. Did we do it at town, town hall? hall last year? Mm -hmm. yes. We did. Okay, we did town hall. We've done the library in the past and town hall in the past. So. Public meeting? Uh, yes. It is a yep. public meeting. Um, at last year's town hall, I was, it's just a blur. I don't remember. Yeah, it was. We did it yeah, later. My first okay. That's why I remember. <laughs> yeah, we did it later. Lots, Lots of folk paneling okay. in that room. Lots yeah. of paneling. And Greg uh, can talk. Okay. Chair. All right. Greg can't do it that week. He can't? You just found out? Yeah. No, nothing okay. that week. Okay. Okay. Do you hear me? <laughs> All right. That was impressive. Scratch that. Uh, and for those who are watching, uh, Greg Duffy could not be here tonight because of a sick child, so he sends his apologies. Um, I'm sure Greg is watching live. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, that, if that I'm, week I'm is flexible. out, that's problematic. I can, I can move. Um, I'm, I'm flexible. It's not like... Uh, uh, to be honest, I'm unsure of travel the following week at this point. Um, the week of the 17th? Is that what you meant by the following yeah, week? Yeah, the week of the 17th. It's tentative that I may be traveling that week. So um, I can't do the week of the 24th. Okay. I, can't, I definitely can't by then. All right. Um, I'm going to suggest that maybe we have to defer coming up with a date on this. Okay. Um, I'll try to figure out. Could we do Friday the 7th right after? We the day after? <laughs> Last year, everybody was so great yeah. about building it right there. Yeah. We could I won't be in on the 7th. My son's graduating, but yeah. okay. uh, it's gra I don't have to be at this retreat. So. It's graduation day. I, I prefer oh, okay. not to. Oh, yeah. I didn't even yeah. know. You might. <laughs> 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 um, all right. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Let me let me say let's not pick a date right now. I'll okay. communicate with everyone about possibilities as soon as I can nail down whether that week of the seventeenth would work. And then if not, I mean, if we need to go into July, we'll go into July. Um, and you were looking at possibly if, um, it was, if it was to be that week, something like yeah. the eighteenth. Yeah, or, or yeah, early in that week. Yeah. Um, and I'll. What about you, yeah. Scott? You're quiet. Oh, I'm this is all. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we'll work on that. Sorry to not be able to come up with something definitive, but. After the newborn, so we don't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So sorry we could not come up with a date there, but we'll get something nailed down as quickly as possible. All right, moving on. Matt, um, I think you're going to talk about the facilities pilot yes. program review. You have a summary in your packet right after the minutes on this. Right, so as you're aware, we, um, we piloted a new facilities um, department structure this past December. Um, and this included the elimination of the facilities manager position, uh, converting that into a part-time contracted position, and then adding a daytime um, custodian. Um, so as part of that pilot, we determined that we, you know, we, well, it was ongoing review, but um, we set April as the full review um, period to determine if, you know, there are any adjustments that were necessary, um, See how it was going um, and, and make any changes that were necessary. Um, so upon that review, we did determine that, um, you know, we were satisfied with the administrative tasks being completed through that part-time contracted position. Um, you know, it's, we were anticipating eight to 10 hours a week um, on the higher end of that range. Um, however, we don't see any reason to change that component of the structure. Um, however, we did find one um, slight deficiency with this structure, um, and that revolved around maintenance. 
Um, so as of the full-time maintenance, or uh, rather facilities director, part of that position's role was maintenance during the day. And then we had a nighttime maintenance person that did kind of the, the bigger ticket items. However, we've, we've found that with this current structure, the daytime custodial position is really f focused on the cleaning as opposed to maintenance items. Um, and there's been a backlog. Um, and the, to the point where the nighttime um, maintenance person has not been able to complete all those, all the maintenance tasks that are required for the school. Um, so as such, um, we are planning <clears throat> to make two changes to the structure, um, really slight changes. So currently we have a um, cleaning position that's open, a nighttime cleaning position that's open. So we are, we intend to change that position to a daytime maintenance role and then shifting the daytime role um, to a, a kind of a split shift. So that there, it's a, right now it's seven to three. We'd be changing that to from 10 to six. Mm -hmm. That way we'd still have some coverage during the day, but we'd have three dedicated hours, which is what we determined is necessary for, um, for their cleaning area for the, the rooms that are outside of the school hours. Okay. Um, so that, that, that is the, uh, the changes that we, we intend to make, um, unless there are any concerns from the, the yeah. board. Does, that, does adding maintenance to that um, job description change the wages, salary? Do we need to offer someone more if that's an additional skill we're looking for? I don't have a problem with that, but I know we've had trouble filling that position. I thought it might make it actually easier to fill if we if that involved a change like that. So they're under the same salary okay. um, scale. Okay. Um, that being said, if I had to guess, it'll likely be someone that has more experience and would come in at a higher step. Okay. So. Question. How uh, Aaron, is that yeah, sorry. gonna affect our our current staff that's there? Have we talked to them about it or because I wouldn't want to lose who we have with a time switch so the 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 only position that this affects is the the current daytime custodian person well, like I said they're currently their seven. hours are seven to three so we'd be looking to adjust that from to ten to six um, so that that will be the the, the change and that will have that will affect that person we have had conversations with that person okay good um you know frankly it's it's not ideal for the person but we have to do what's right for the school the institution right so i've got a quick question oh, so yeah. this works for this works with the current people that are involved um but if the current um contract person won the lottery moved away retired right mm -hmm. could we sustain this structure um, or is it not sustainable? Only sustainable with the current, the current people involved, because that's a house of cards there. And not to make a change now, but but are we thinking about what what if, right? Yeah. So that that's an important question because there will be a time when we are looking for like that that transition. Yeah. Um, and what what our thought process is is for one of those two maintenance roles to grow into that position who can take on those administrative tasks um, so more of a supervisory level um, that or um, we could also look at supplementing it at the um, similar to what we're doing now within the SAU from one of the other um, that's that is I mean yeah I, I get it the facilities manager role is typically held at the SAU level. As it stands now, we have five <laughs> individual facilities managers positions. I mean, this is a contracted role now. So there's, it can be done at a higher level or a shared level, um, but it will, it, that will be determined. I mean, that's something we, we, we're gonna have to figure out because that is really, short of blowing up the entire SAU structure, <laughs> And I, you know, we'll have to determine that as we go. But the plan is to get one of these guys, these these positions up to speed, and then hopefully, in an ideal world, 
we can we can do another shared and consolidate these positions because um, ult be ultimately it would make sense to have one person across the SAU. So if the SAU is looking at it, then I'm comfortable. The second thing is if we're looking at developing one of the people that are in the current role, we just need to make sure that there's a development <coughs> plan in place and that's not going to happen right by itself. We right. need to actually be helping that person um, and identifying what the gaps are. Absolutely. Okay. So. What, what are the hours of the daytime maintenance position? So that will be during school hours, so 7 to 3. Okay. And that means no one here at night? There will be. There, there will be the. There'll be one. So you will. We'll still thing. continue with the. The night person. How did I? Miss so there's there's so there's current there's currently. Two. Two on at night. Okay. So that's where instead I was of confused. hiring a third at night, there'll be. That'll be the maintenance person. Gotcha. In, it, that th not, that's not a new hire. That's yep. a, that's a replacement. Yep. Because we have. A we have an because we have an opening. Yep. No. Gotcha. Okay. Any other questions for Matt on that? No? Okay. Great. Thank you, Matt. Um, under new business, uh, we have two. Uh, we have, no, we have one gift to accept. Um, there's a page in your packet. This is from EverFi, but I don't know what EverFi is. Can you explain to us what EverFi um, so is? Thank you. This is. Um a gift of surf, uh, three Surface Pros, and they were part of a promotion with the Character Playbook program. The Character Playbook is a character education digital learning program that is powered by EverFi. It's sponsored by the New England Patriots and the United Way of Greater Seacoast, so it was really a, a collaboration of those groups. Um, uh, because we um, have been using the program, um, they, we, they gifted the Microsoft Surface Pros to us um, and hope that we make good use of them moving forward. Great, thank you. And any questions on that, Tom? So um, I know that we have uh, Mac devices throughout the um, throughout the school. How will these um, devices be used? First of all, and then I want to just talk about the support and the licensing and just making sure that we're not bolting something on that doesn't fit. This is a very generous gift. I just want to make sure that we're going to utilize it effectively and that they shouldn't be going someplace else. Had a systems administrator, I would know more about that. Um, I so I unfortunately um, I tried to learn more about that, and I'm not quite sure how well. Uh, I don't imagine that it would be an issue um, coming onto our server. You're right; we do have Apple products in our building, um, so I'm not really sure in the how much of a challenge this could be or not be in making the best use of them. I'm sure that we will be able to use them. Um, how much they'll be maximized, I'm not really sure. So are they for students? Are they for teachers? Are they for administration? They're for use with students. Um, so it's just a way to access things on the web in an easy way. It's to be able to uh, sit down with a group, a small group of students and, and do small group work, um, look at surveys, look at videos, whatever the case yeah. may be. So it's just a, uh, an easy portable device that um, is quite powerful. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have to worry about um, you know memory issues or on memory or anything like that. So, cool. so if we were to imagine a, sh a, a cart f full of iPads or full of airbooks or whatever, mm -hmm. and a couple of Surface Pros, are we going to grab the Surface Pros First or second, or well, I just want to make sure they're not sitting on a shelf, right? Right. They would be used differently. They wouldn't be in with the rest of, of <coughs> them um, because they would have different um, uses. different uses, different things loaded on them. Specifically, um, these have the character playbook program on them. Um, we can put other things on them as well, but it's just a way for students to be able to easily access. The intent was, the hope was from EverFi and, and the other sponsors to make it easy for our students to access, and um, that was hence the gift had is kind of the, their general process with it. They have a lot of free um, programming that they offer to um, students. I, I think it's wonderful. I think it's really generous. I just want to make sure that we know how we're going to use them. We She's going to use them. I, I can tell. I know. I know. She's going to use them. I know we will use them. I'm, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't know enough about the um, the challenges associated with having a different device than what we normally use with our students. To be honest with you, I wish I could speak to it better, um, but I don't have the personnel at the building right now for and that. So. One last question. What's the program that's 
they're being it's, used now and that they're donating it because of? It's Character mm -hmm. Playbook, which is a social emotional learning um, really intended for the middle school grades. Um, has different activities on it, different um, presentations. It's, it's a social emotional learning. It's part yeah. of the curriculum currently? It is currently um, in use uh, with uh, guidance. So this might be, these tools might be used with the with guidance yes. right. with students one-on-one yes. -on -one. yes got yes. it okay yes yeah they're not in the regular classroom it's really um at the moment envisioned as a tool for guidance and that's how, that's how it's been used thus far now i'm feeling better okay, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> all right do we have a motion to accept the gift Go ahead, Aaron. You don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> I make a motion to accept the gift of three Surface Pro tablets from EverFi. We have a second. Second from Scott. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor? I'm not opposed? opposed. No. Abstaining? Tom's abstaining. Okay. And next item is we have a facility use request from Reach the Beach, who have been here many times before. Um, any questions about this? This is the race that goes down to the ocean from the mountains. They use our parking lot, set up portable toilets. They've always been excellent at cleaning, at, up, at cleaning up. So I have a, broad, yeah. a broader question. Yeah. So, We've um, we had another request I think last time from MS Society yes. for the bikes and and it sounds you know with MS and also reach the beach somebody entities that have come to us year after year they're responsible they do a good job they pick up clean up after themselves if we were to receive something from a new entity that we've not had an experience with would we consider asking them to put down some kind of deposit or something like that so you know e even for reach the beach or MS some kind of agreement that, you know, if they did cause damage or leave a lot of trash or required um, some work on our behalf to clean up after them, that, uh, that perhaps it's a deposit that could be used to uh, pay for those services. I think they would be liable for any cost. We I think the policy says they would be, but I'm not. I mean, we 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 don't currently ask for a deposit, but we. We certainly have the recourse to come after them. Um, you know how effective that may. Be. I mean, it, the, the 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 leverage we have is they wouldn't be allowed to utilize our facility again. Really, that's the primary deterrence. Um, but I can't think of any instances where we've had real abuse. Yeah, but it, yeah. But, um, but as a uh, proactive measure, just. When it's five hundred dollar deposit, and you leave the place, and it's clean and picked up, and two days later we return your deposit. Well, so that we way we're not chasing down people and trying to and trying to ensure that they're good citizens and responsible. Right. Yeah, I mean that would have to be a policy, policy adjustment. Policy change, right? Um, so that's not currently in the policy, but it's certainly something we can look at. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about Reach the Beach? Yeah, one quick question. Speaking of policy, what's the um, liability? limit that they need to carry with us as a name this year. Do you recall? I'm sorry? A million? I think it's a one million. A million bucks. It's a million. So, million. so they, they provide us with a certificate of insurance so that we know that they're yep. That's right. insured and everything, everything's good to go there. Okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Do we have a motion to approve the facilities use request? Um, I move we accept the uh, Reach the Beach facilities request. Uh, September 14, 2019, from 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Great. Thank you. And the last item on a new business is the last day of school. Last day of school. So the state requires that you put in 180 days of school or 990 instructional hours. This year, you scheduled 177 days, obviously scheduled well more than the 990 hours. We have had one no school day on March the 4th, number of delays, but one no school day. And so you have an option here. That would be to have the last student day scheduled for the 13th of June, Thursday the 13th of June, 
That would mean putting in 176 days, but still well more than 990 hours. Um, or you could reschedule that day um, and have school on Friday, June 14th. And the number of days that you have for staff after, is it the same? It's still one. You're scheduled to go to two. 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 Still scheduled to go to Monday at this point? Tuesday. Tuesday at this Tuesday. point. Well, that is more than the other districts. Okay, so you're scheduled to go to Tuesday. Um, and this would mean you'd still go to till, till Tuesday, yes. no matter which Correct. of those staff, decisions you make. Staff would remain the same. Yes. That's right. So your, your choice. I will tell you that every other district in our SAU has scheduled their last student day. Uh, they've taken advantage of the option because they all have more than 180 days or the 990 hours. They are scheduled all to end on Thursday, June 13th with their early I releases. That's a great idea. Tom, <laughs> so being contrarian, right? So just for conversation. Tom, listen. This, this, hear me I out, knew to call on him okay. first. <laughs> hear me out on this. All right, so all right. we're getting out earlier than we typically do because we have an at-school day. So the couple of following weeks for parents that have two uh, working parents, there's no, there are no um, real camps available, and they're going to need to be taking time off to take care of some of the younger kids. If we take it out and have a Friday as well, it ends up being a, more of a burden on those. Uh, families that have two working parents or young kids at home. I'm looking at both the teachers, the students, and the parents when I'm thinking about right. this. So, I hear it. Okay. I so see it, that. But it's, Scott, it's, okay. But it sounds like the teachers are going to be here anyways, correct? The teachers will be here until Tuesday the 18th. So as a compromise, why don't we have the last day of school be the 13th, and if any parents want to deliver their children to the school <laughs> on the 14th, that there can be activities planned for the students. No, it, that, was our, that would be a the teacher professional. That was well, PD day. That, that was a professional yeah. development yeah, day. Do. Yeah. I do think that's. Yeah, I, I always see the teachers like the need for your professional development days are so great. They're always so jam packed. We could certainly use it to have an extra I day. I think I can't it would be. As he said, I can't speak to uh, Joe Manzi's commitment and his ability to start on Friday the 14th. I'm not sure unless you have something, Tracy. Um, that could make a difference for parents. And it, it, it well, does make a difference for parents to go um, till the 14th. Mm -hmm. So he probably didn't schedule something. I, I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not gonna dig in my heels, but I think it's worth but us can't. having right. someone mm -hmm. representing I, parents. I. I don't disagree with you, Tom. I. And that's an issue throughout the Seacoast, because all the schools are getting out. Right. So what's so, your pleasure? So do we have a motion so or a thought? My, or my opinion would be to have the last day of school be on the, on the 14th, but that's just one person's opinion, and I'm not, a motion? I'm not the school board vote. I will make a motion to move um, the last day of school to be the 14th, sure. I'm going to second that. I, I tend to agree with Tom. I know it's... I know it's just one day and it, you know, we just have the one snow day, but I think it does make a difference to people that schedule wise that mm -hmm. it's not as difficult. And, and it's not to say there's not an impact on the teachers and that they may prefer it to be the 13th. I, I absolutely understand that. It's about the broader community from my perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the teachers would lose a professional development day? Uh, yes, we would have the two on Monday and Tuesday. And yes. not three. To educate, and not, to educate the rookie, what what takes place on such days? Well, it depends. I mean, you heard some things earlier that, that are in the works here. There would probably be some time spent on, on, on those pieces more than anything else, right? And we also have train, trainers coming in on Monday right. and Tuesday already. Yes, yeah, so we already had that. So on what? So we had on Monday. balanced literacy and yes. on math lab. Yeah. This Balanced literacy for K through two and um, bridges for three through five. Breakdown. So what would happen on Friday um, if there were no school? Is there a plan? Well, there's a what they just said is there's a plan. Monday, Tuesday. But they, right? Yeah. Well, that that quite frankly, I don't know whether it would be more time devoted to that. My sense is there's a broad enough plan that they can use another day on those topics. Gotcha. So for me, for me on the trade-off, if if I knew what the plan was Friday, that would that would help the the way and balance the the two. So not knowing if we had the day or not. You didn't have a plan. Gotcha. That's, yeah. fair. That's the, fair. I know they have the competency work as people are preparing their 
their mm -hmm. fall competency, their quality performance <coughs> assessments. We have lots of things to do. Right, we have not yeah. 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 I just don't have anything planned. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, we, would, council, we would put the additional put time to books together and talk years. about their next year and yeah, a lot to do. Lot, a lot. Yeah. So you have a motion and a second. Sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> we have. Do you have a motion and a second? Any other comments before we vote on that? All right. All those in favor of the fourteenth. Opposed? Okay. Three to one. Okay. Thank you very much. Six fourteen it is. We didn't talk about a half day. Um, we're we're assuming half days for those last days. Those the last, last day, day is always a half yes. day. It, that's so it'll be an early release. Correct. Uh, that really doesn't help the parents that. What does because they'd have to do a day off on Thursday and a day off on Friday, right. and now it's it's a Friday, and it's a half day, not not a full day. They Actually could, they could work until eleven or noon. Okay. Right. Moving on, written reports, <coughs> superintendent's report, Dr. Lupini. So I want to mention a couple things that are in in the written report that I gave you. First, um, to thank again. Um, voters in our five school districts for the approval of the collective bargaining agreement um, with our teachers. Um, it is a huge deal to have this four-year agreement in place um, to know where we're headed, to know what the conditions are in terms of hiring, uh, and has been a big issue in terms of morale here since, since, they were, since that agreement was approved. Um, it also gives us time now to work on a number of things because they're there's the approval of the agreement, and then there's the actual implementation, right? So one of the big issues for us right now is health insurance. So we know um, from a number of conversations that people are already looking um, at uh, one of our more at our most expensive plan um, going away in the second year of the agreement. We know because people have indicated to us that some people are looking to make that change this year, not wait till the plan actually goes away. And so the more great work that we can do out of HR to let people know what their options are, the better chance we have of reducing their costs and our costs um, now instead of in another year. So that's a big issue for us as we head into open enrollment period. We obviously have pieces around tuition reimbursement, personal day eligibility, the teacher work day, that Friday uh, piece that was in the collective bargaining agreement, all to make sure that we lay out how exactly those things will work. But we're thrilled to be able to actually have those conversations instead of the alternative, which would have come if we didn't have a collective bargaining agreement. Um, I, I wanna say an another great word about Mr. Farrar and his work on the legislative forum that we put together, um, that he put together. We were able to meet with uh, SAU 90 colleagues with a number of representatives um, from uh, our, across our district. I actually had an opportunity to meet the next week with Senator uh, Sherman. Uh, to talk about some of the same issues. Senator Sherman wasn't able to make this, this forum, um, but he's been very gracious with his time since. Um, one of the issues I did not mention to you the last time, I don't think, that we dealt with at the forum was the issue that's currently in discussion in the House, I believe it was voted out of the Senate, um, to change the teacher tenure law um, back to what it used to be. Um, the history lesson goes like this. It used to be three years to tenure for new teachers, two years, if they came out of a district already having tenure. That was expanded uh, to five years uh, and three if you came out uh, came from a district with tenure. Um, the NEA has made it a major issue to roll that back to the three and two. Um, we did speak with the uh, representatives uh, about that. Uh, they've heard the NEA's point of view on this. Um, we have a different point of view. Um, and I'll, I'll say it here, what I said to them, which, which is I think, I think the NEA is being extremely short-sighted um, in this view. Um, I have told, I've, I've worked with the three years to tenure my entire career. And I've always told principals, you have two years to make a decision because we're not gonna go into that third year unless you're 100% certain you have two years. In a five-year plan, you have four years to make that decision. It's longer for a person to sort of learn their trade. We, we know that people in these positions take some number of years to get to the point where they're experienced educators and, and are doing things um, the way we'd like to see them in the classroom. I think, quite frankly, this is, this is selling new teachers short. Um, uh, we think it will get out of the House and Senate. Um, we're not certain what will happen. 
uh, when it gets to the governor's office or whether the House and Senate have the votes to, uh, to override it. But it's an issue to have on your, on your sort of radar. Um, policy committee, our policy subcommittee has met twice now, has looked at 22 proposed policies um, and is recommending 17 of those for adoption by the districts. We've had a conversation particularly about those policies that are required by law. So there are three buckets that, that uh, NHSBA recommends policy to us in. Those that are required by law, they tend to be fairly boilerplate. Um, those that are recommended and those that are optional. Those last two categories tend to be much more, uh, much different uh, sometimes from district to district. But these 70 uh, aren't. And so the thinking on the policy subcommittee is to try this a little bit differently. We've got a good reception in our other districts to an idea of having your individual board meetings as the first read and having the joint board meeting as the second read. What we would need there is a majority vote of each board. So we need at least three members from our five member boards, at least two members from our three member board in order to adopt these across all of our districts. We're planning out of that group to, to handle all of our required by law policies that way and hopefully get our policy manuals uh, much more in line with where they need to be quicker in that way. So you have a, a group of 17 recommended for first read tonight. Um, those are the items I wanted to mention in my report. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Any questions for Dr. Lupini? That's a great process. Just a comment. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure our policy committee representative is doing a bang-up job. And, and, and the alternate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, moving on. Uh, Assistant Superintendent of Sports, Dr. Cataret. Um, are any of you planning to go to Concord on May 10th for Kim Mullen's recognition with the Seacoast area and possible state level champion for children? I got an invitation. I did, I got it. I keep I did. looking at it. I haven't gotten, to, May. I haven't gotten to May yet. <laughs> um, perhaps by May 1st, you can let me know so I can yeah. make sure we have enough tables. So far, okay. we have pretty good representation. Um, no one from this board yet, but pretty exciting time for all of us. Um, recertification process. At the time of the writing of this, I had 60 faculty members still left to do. I have approximately 100. It's a really busy, important time of year for us um, as far as our licensures. And as of today, I believe I'm down to 11. So it's been a huge, huge portion of time. So congratulations to all the teachers that have been reflective, working with their administrators, and um, everything that they submit. I read through all of them and write back substantial feedback to all those teachers. In addition to that, um, I want to say we have about 20, 21, 22 teachers on um, alternative certification plans, meaning they either don't have a teacher certification or a different certification than where they are. They're looking to be certified. And as of today, everyone is in, well in that process and has their um, initial <coughs> certifications ready to go. So that's a huge process <coughs> for anyone going through that. <coughs> Along with um, lots of thanks to the people who've been mentors to them this year in that process, including some individuals here at this school. Um, the biggest thing that's gone on this particular month, and huge thanks to Becca and our administrators for their help and coordination, was our second um, SAU PD Day, Professional Development Day, which took place on April 3rd. <coughs> and um, you, most of you are familiar with our plan for this year, what we were looking at. And uh, we chose to move forward in our competency work this year on quality performance assessments and um, we had committed to approximately 45 throughout the SAU, and we have 96 of them that have been delivered or in the process of some final revisions as a result of our day. And we had some rich, rich work getting to those 96. And um, I'd like to celebrate the instructional leadership. That was a vision that I had when I came here, and my initial entry planning was um, for our administrative team to be seen as instructional leaders. And we modeled this process. Um, in the building level, teachers shared their quality performances with one another, went through protocols, received feedback. We did the same thing with administrators in practice, um, went through protocols, how they would be used, and then everyone then was assigned a different group. You see the schedule here for April 3rd, and all of our leadership throughout the SAU then had a group and got to um, experience that 
with the teachers and we had some phenomenal phenomenal feedback um, from the staff and they valued one another and realized that they, I think that they gained a lot of confidence and realized that we are all, all in it together there was some real apprehension initially in sharing with one another and admitting what the challenges were or, or feeling um, anxious about the shortcomings but they realized and got awesome feedback from one another and we have the, some really great products to best serve our children and have them work towards some mastery and I think it really built some camaraderie and has the ball absolutely rolling with great momentum for sharing with one another and increase that bank so I had made an um, a team drive for curriculum work so all of it's on there divided up and everyone can access it so huge thanks to the team over here and the roles that they played so really exciting work to be done and I included some pictures of different quality performance assessments um, actually for here in this school because part of that process the teachers all brought examples of student work that we were able to look at and calibrate what a one two three or four would look like so really exciting things and I'm proud to leave on leave on that note you say a word about that thank you may I say yes. a word about this yes. uh, Absolutely. so um, I, I just want to say a word about Dr. Cataret's work that day, John Vanderall's work that day, your administrators' work that day, but um, but mostly about your teachers, who were amazing. Um, the uh, so Dr. Cataret sort of hinted at this. The one of the pieces of, uh, going in that people were concerned about is that it doesn't appear that these teachers across districts in the SAU have had a lot of time to get together and sort of talk about practice. And so there, we heard a lot of apprehension about people who were concerned about going and meeting with, let's say, third grade colleagues from another district and admitting that they were struggling with something, right? Would they really do that? A lot of people saying, no, we're not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. And it, but they did. That's great. They did. And they walked out of there with um, better products for the assessments that they had created. Um, and they walked out of there with, with, I think, enhanced relationships. I was in with third and fourth and fourth fifth day. grade, I guess we were in that room. And, uh, and your teachers, some of the tasks that I saw that they had designed were truly incredible. I mean, they were, as John said to me afterward, he, you know, he's worked with PACE districts, districts who sort of went into this, uh, looking at this as, the, as a substitute for the state assessment. They were every bit as good as some of the best work that he's seen from some of those PACE districts. Um, they were they were tremendous, um, and so um, I just want to say that to you that um, that it was really a pleasure working with them that day. I got two quick yes. positive comments. First of all, I'm really glad to hear that, and Dr. Kettered, I was going to ask you about that because the fact that teachers are willing to take that stretch and, and say, "Hey, I want to learn more," I think it's going to help them because that's what their students are doing every day, right? Yeah. So that's fantastic. The second thing is, I happen to be at a student share for the fifth grade in this building earlier this week and I heard a teacher say about the project that they were presenting and the students were presenting hey this could be a QPA mm -hmm. and I said aha <laughs> so it was great I mean, just wanted to give you that feedback because they're thinking along those lines yeah. and it really was cool mm -hmm. it was a great day yeah. yeah I heard a lot of positive feedback from that day the pages of comments yeah. and we did an exit slip and the, the feedback is just so wonderful and I will say we did also really great feedback with for special education for our EAs well, that's, I love to see that, that the Unified Arts are on there, you see, and yeah. stuff. That's great. Tried to hit everybody. Okay. And the nurses. <laughs> thank you. Any other questions for Dr. Canada? I just don't. Nope. All right. Thank you. Um, administrative report. You have a uh, report sure, in your packet. Any highlights, Eric? I just have one quick question for Dr. C. Just, oh, yeah. So oh, sure. are, all the, are all of these pictures on the, on the back page, the last page of your report from Northampton School? Yes, they yeah. are. I, okay. I just wanted, I, I wasn't 100% positive on the middle row, but so yes, all. I can talk about that if you'd like. Seven, eight, nine, ten of those photos Dr. Cataret took when she was visiting Northampton Schools. Oh, way more than that if you ever want to see them, but. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, just a few things I want to highlight beyond the uh, written report. Uh, under field trips. The eighth grade trip to Portsmouth, the escape room and Odeorn State Pork Park <laughs> is an addition from what we've communicated with you uh, last month. Okay, so the eighth grade, as you'll see, has uh, trips consecutive Tuesdays there in May. Okay, you see a write-up um, on our pilot partnership with the Northampton PD. 
uh, Chief Moan and I and Dr. Lupini will get together on April 30th to uh, discuss and assess. You see a, um, a fairly detailed write-up on the RTI IT, the investigation team that I, I mentioned previously. So you can see that the, uh, the May 9th meeting to Nottingham School is highlighted there, but a little more description about their work. And the, uh, the accountability testing. So the, so the student assessment system, so the New Hampshire uh, accountability assessment, it's all online um, now as compared to previously when it was uh, paper pencil. But um, because of the one-to-one -one initiative, uh, we've been able to push back the start date for that. The window's been open since March 19th. But because sixth grade can go. Sorry, not to interrupt, but is this is this the new Smarter Balance? Yes. Is, okay, yes. I just Sorry. want to be sure. We, I, I, just, yep. I sometimes get the names. The new, so the new Smarter Balance, uh, year <laughs> two of the new Smarter Balance. So it's okay. SAS AIR, okay. American Institute for okay. Research. Okay. Whatever they so, and the teachers yeah. are very happy. I just wanted to be sure it was the one that we just They are. Uh, so sixth, sixth grade, sixth grade, seventh, and eighth grade, they're all starting after Memorial Day. And they're thrilled. With which them. is unprecedented. <laughs> so, but because they can, they have the capacity to do that. Okay. Super. So, which means also that third, fourth, and fifth grade can push back a little bit since we have to share laptops less than we would have otherwise. So, our, our first uh, group to go will be fifth grade science, uh, fifth grade and eighth grade need to take three assessments rather than two. Third through eighth grade takes English language arts and math. Fifth grade and eighth grade also takes a science assessment. So the science assessment is also online through this platform this year. And fifth grade is leading off on uh, Thursday, May, May 9th. And these align with like the Common Core, right? Yes, they absolutely do. Yeah. So this is, a, this is the state's accountability measure. You, you heard Dr. Lapini mention PACE districts. Mm -hmm. So we're a traditional district, so we're not, <clears throat> we're not in, that, um, in that program. So we uh, take the, um, the state measure. Okay, great. Any questions for Eric? No? All right, super. Thank you. Oh, one thing, I, oh. I do, I'm sorry, I did put it in bold for a reason. Under events, art show slash book fair. Okay, so on May 8th, we're in collaboration, coordination with the art show this year. We are also holding a book fair. Okay, so you'll, I'm sure uh, your kids will come home and be Super. talking about the book for, fair as well. So, Great. and Thank I hope you. you'll be able to join us. All right. Yep. We have a date for artists and residents, right? That's, yes. 21st is the show, or? <laughs> I'd have to look it up on our calendars. I don't know. I know for we got sure. something. I don't know for and sure. That's something Aaron. really fun for it's everyone. To, it to is definitely super exciting. I'm sorry I didn't put it on. No, it, no, you have it right here. Oh, good. I just wasn't <laughs> okay. sure about the act. I think we meet before Thank that. You. The actual then, date. And then beyond that, the you have the the full uh, climate culture yeah. audit survey okay. for your perusal and information. All right, thank you. Thanks. Oh. Um, thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, uh, quick change to the agenda here. Dr. Lupini has to um, depart shortly, so we're going to move up two items that he needs to deal with, and then we'll circle back to the others. The first is uh, uh, we'll go to uh, item nine, the personnel. We have a resignation. Um, you have a letter. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. It's close to the mm, right. benchmark after facilities. Thank you. Uh, from Deidre Turmel, who was our, uh, what was her title? Interventionist. Intervention, interventionist. Um, she, her family, has, she's relocated. She's moved. So uh, the commute, as you noted in our letter, um, is uh, um, made it too difficult for her to continue. Um, for the remainder of the year. So she is um, leaving us. Um, any questions about that at this point? Uh, obviously, we'll be looking to fill that position. We'll bring on someone for the remainder of the year and then advertise the position is, I think, how okay. we're going to handle this. Okay. 
Uh -huh. What does an interventionist do? Um, they, so we do um, baseline reading and math assessments um, at the beginning of the year for uh, actually and throughout the year for grades K through 3 and for those students who aren't quite meeting benchmark they work with the interventionist to try and, and, and close that gap. Um, so we work in conjunction with our Title I tutor as well um, because some students just develop at a different rate. Okay. Any questions about that? No. Um, so the the last I the next item uh, we're going to do uh, we need to go into a brief non-public so um, for our uh, TV uh, guys there just we don't normally do this in the middle of a meeting but if I'm they can sorry. stay tuned we will go into a brief non-public and step into the other room yep. super thank you uh, Matt financial report all right so um, in your packet, um, here is the year-to-date expenditure report, as well as the um, year-to-date revenue report. Um, there have not been any significant changes to the expenditure report since last month. Um, I will note that the, um, to the total available balance is approximately $100,000, uh, so that is a number that we're monitoring as we are finishing up this last um, two and a half months. Um, we would prefer not to um, dip into the special education expendable trust. However, that is a lever should we need to. Um, we are over budget by $100,000 in special education. Um, I'll also note forward looking um, in regard to health insurance that we did receive our revisit rate um, for premiums and that did come down 4.2 or 4.3 percent represents approximately forty thousand um, dollars overall for next year so when we are looking at next year's budget as you're aware we reduced that line item by eighty five thousand dollars because we to utilize a, the health insurance expendable trust that's something that we can monitor as we go through the year as well okay. as a lever so be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions for Matt? Okay. All right, thank you. Um, budget committee uh, had an organizational meeting, um, but won't begin until the fall. Uh, you have facilities report in your packet. Uh, any questions about the facilities report? We did talk about facilities stuff earlier. Um, uh, CIP uh, doesn't begin until the summer. And you have the principal's report uh, from Winnicunit in your packet. Uh, unless there's any questions about those things. Not about those no. things, but I do have one question, Mr. Sununu. Yes. Um, can we take a, actually this probably goes to the administration. So um, I noticed and I heard feedback from some parents at Beauty and the Beast that some kids were holding handheld mics and some kids had the body mics on. Um, do we need to look at more um, body mics because I'm just wondering and if we do um, what would be the count so we can figure out what the budget impact would be and I know you don't have the answer right now but right well well the school we have four so for the production we actually had 24 yeah 24 lavalier microphones yeah that you know the the, pr the principals kept theirs but kids were exchanging it yeah. and they still apparently needed to use the handheld perhaps perhaps that was just that production part of the part of the plan maybe there was a glitch that night but that the sound guys they were managing 24 wireless microphones right. which we, is we bring them in we don't which own is, them, that's exa right? exactly right with, like, the yeah. sound. We, which we goes back four. to my which we goes own back, we own four which goes back to my question from a couple weeks ago which we rent this stuff each year yep. so it goes back to the question of is there a cost benefit over the course of five years that we would recoup that money if we weren't renting it so I just think, I'm not saying we need to spend it, but I think we should know what the cost benefit is of renting versus owning. So that's something I can work with yeah. the administration on, look at the useful lifespan of yep. a lavalier and other sound equipment, yep. and then just do a cost analysis to determine what the better route is. And renting might be the best yeah. thing. I just think we should be looking at it and be able well, to explain. We, we did do that a couple years ago, which is how we ended up buying the lighting and sound. <laughs> that we had been previously renting right. for the performances. Yep. So we have some of it is now permanent, but we can look at what, you know, what we're doing it's additionally. It's hard for me to make a ballpark. I mean, with school sometimes, 
quite honestly, you want to lease or rent yep. because it of the, breaks or whatever. Because it's high maintenance. <laughs> totally, totally get um, it. That being said, um, oh, yeah. you know, in some kids, absolutely buy it, run it into the ground. Um, we'll get it, get our money's worth. So we'll, we'll take a look at it. Thank you. Uh, just a, a, uh, yeah. Another rookie question. So for this example, is there ever an instance where things are bought at the SAU level? So, for example, microphones in different schools have different plays and productions, and not everybody needs them on the same night. You know, it is from an economy of scale perspective, do you ever buy things at the SAU level to share amongst? The I schools? mean, I, I love that line of thinking. That's something we're <laughs> we're trying to um, <laughs> do. We're, we're trying to think that way as as an SAU because previously it really was siloed by district um you know in this in so short answer is Forget there's not there's not a whole lot of sharing across sau's but do you have the ability to buy things for the for the benefit of the multiple school districts within the sau well there's an sau budget so we, we could allocate funds that way currently we don't we don't have like a we, we'd have to identify those items obviously as part of the budget okay. process i mean so it's, it, those are those are, those are the type of things that we we're trying to look at to, to create cost efficiencies. Mm -hmm. So in this case, probably wouldn't work because they all seem to be at the same time. But this is just that's a, the point being that these type of things it's something that we are looking at. So that's great. Okay, thanks. Um, we dealt with the uh, personnel matter uh, policy. Um, as Dr. Lupini discussed, you have a 17, is it? 17, 17. draft policies um, in your packet. It says um, votes required, but actually this is just yeah. the first, first read. Yeah. yeah. No vote this is the first you read. You can, so. but it's a couple yeah, more so restricted, but We will uh, take these as a first read, and then as Dr. Lupini mentioned, uh, this, our second read and approval would be done at the joint board meeting uh, at the end of the month. Um, I don't know if any. Uh, you, I had a question. Yeah. Just, I don't want to go through these one by one, but no, if you no, have no, no. It's a general question. Yeah. So, are, are most of these, when you review them, are they, do they tend to stay the same? And changes are in yellow. Is that it? Um, what can I, I speak see to that? Yeah. Yellow Please. highlights. So, these are the ones that are proposed through the New Hampshire School Boards Association, and they're more boilerplate and similar throughout districts throughout the state because they are required by law. Yeah. So they tend to stay mm -hmm. like this, very few, very little wordsmithing. And some of these we currently have, some of them we don't have. So we don't But we're looking to sort policy. of, the ones that we do have on these items, we're looking to just blanket replace with n newer updated versions that have been updated to reflect okay. current state law. These are all the ones required by so law. So we're looking. More updated yeah. things like e-cigarettes, so, I wouldn't assume. So, you know, we have, yeah, obviously, there. so some of these are, are replacing policies that we have but instead of just highlighting the differences what we've what they've done is brought forward the one recommended by the school board admin, uh, association and we're dropping that in as a full-on replacement for the policy we have so if, if if these are touching on something we have it's a replacement if it's touching on something we don't have it's new okay and those some of those are optional a couple yeah. that you have are optional. okay and uh, last question on that, just because it is the one that um, stands out in my mind. Um, liquid nicotine, is that like vaping? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so we that's vaping without saying vaping. Not all the vapes have nicotine, like, but they can, have, they can opt for that, yes. So is that going to be, is that somewhere in policy as well? Like actually referring to the word vape, or we just leave that Well, e-cigarettes are included in here. E -cigarettes, yeah. Okay. So you need the liquid. E-cigarettes, the device, mm -hmm. vaping would be the verb. Okay. That's, okay. And some of these look like they're redundant. They're not. Okay. Because they address, some of them address students, some of them address um, teachers, some of them address other adults. So they're, they're different even if they look the same. Section G, I believe, is students, and J is adults, or the other way around. But uh, G is, is adults. It's the GBA workplace. GBAA is adults, yeah. yeah. JBA is students. Is students yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have a question yeah. on the uh, change of school or assignment. Uh, which uh, which one is that? Uh, it's J. Well, let's see. They're all J. Um, uh, is, what's the code up in the upper right corner? Uh, JCA. 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 Okay. Just just to educate me. Yep. 
if, if a parent comes to us and says, I want to go to a different school because I think they'll get a better education elsewhere, I mean, what, can you talk about the nature of the request and how legitimate it needs to be? And if somebody from a different school within the district says, I want to go to Northampton because a student will get a better education there? So we had this discussion at the Winnicott Board prior to because the high school is where we tend to have more of those requests and there are guidelines by which um, in the past superintendents could grant that. Now it does come to the school board level and um, there are different examples. In the past we had some examples where students, districts might exchange students at no, no cost depending on what had gone on, what the reasons might be. And then we have situations where it involves manifest educational hardship and that would be a reason why kids might be placed in another district. And sometimes it requires... Sorry, what is manifest educational hardship? Um, to give an example. If they needed particular services that our district might not be able to offer or incoming students' districts might not be able to offer, then that could be an example of manifestation so, so a, manifestation a, a concrete example is at Southampton, um, they no longer um, allow those students to attend Whittier Technology School, the vocational school. Whittier no longer allows them to attend, but yeah. Yeah, they're not allowed to attend. Um, so mm. they, and they go to Amesbury High School. So now when it kind of accepts or has the option of accepting them as a manifest, as a hardship to go to SST because we need to provide vocational options to our students. Um, but, but to your point, there isn't. It, it, there needs to be a legitimate reason, like bullying, or they, they, it can't just be a preference. And then there is often tuition paid. So if there's a difference between where they're paid to come to your school, what the cost per student is, versus the discrepancy, then they make up discrepancies. There's different situations, different scenarios. Okay. Just want to make certain it's just yeah. not something that's arbitrary. And, yeah. No. Okay. Any other questions about any of these in particular? If in reading these um, you do come up with any um, comments or concerns, you can email the SAU uh, staff ahead of our June 3rd, uh, April 30 meeting, and they can be addressed there as well. So, and that's when we'll have a second read and a vote. Okay. All right. Uh, that brings us to the end here. We have a joint board meeting on Tuesday, April 30th at 7 p.m. at Winnicunit. Our next regularly scheduled meeting is May 16th uh, here. It's currently scheduled for 7 p.m. Um, as I said, I'll get back to folks on a date for the retreat. Um, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I will. Yeah. and I'll wrap up. I'm going to make a motion to authorize the superintendent to uh, sign the agreement, discuss the personnel matter uh, in our non-public session. Second. Any discussion? Nope. All those in favor? That's it. Yeah. Yes, uh, make a motion to authorize the superintendent to sign Sorry. the personnel related agreement discussed in non public. Is that it? Anyone have anything else? Have yeah. Yes. Uh, when, uh, there was the, the yes. No, we don't need to vote on that. Okay. I move we adjourn at 909. I'll second that. All those in favor? All right. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.